Hello, and welcome to another one of Cumbroad Living Landscapes videos on how you can help wildlife in your local area. Today, we're going to be making a solitary bee home. So what is a solitary bee home, I hear you ask? Well, I don't actually hear you ask because this is a video, not a two-way conversation. But you know what I mean. I'm going to assume you're asking, what is a solitary bee home? A solitary bee home is a home for solitary bees. Easy. If you can keep all your questions that simple, I would be very grateful. So, now we know what a solitary bee home is, what's a solitary bee? Solitary bees, just like the name suggests, are bees that live on their own. So unlike social bees, like bumblebees and honeybees, solitary bees like to live just by themselves. There are more than 250 species of bee in the UK, and 90% of them are solitary bees. So they're really important. And we also think that a single solitary bee might be worth up to 150 honeybees in terms of the amount of pollination it provides. So it's really important that we look after them. But they are having trouble. They need special places to live. They like to live in crevices and holes. Some of them like to live underground, but the ones we're looking at today, the home that we're building today is for, uh, probably going to be used by a type of bee called a mason bee. And they like to live in little crevices and holes, hollow twigs, hollow trees, things like that. And these sort of habitats are disappearing. They're becoming much harder to find as we become much tidier and as we take over more and more space with our buildings and things. So we're going to provide one of these little homes in our garden or in a green space for them. So you can see a little example here of a solitary bee home. This is one that we've bought. It's quite an old one, this one, but you can see that it's actually been used. If you look at the little um, holes, you'll see that some of them have been plugged up. And that's a solitary bee that's done that. It's come in and it's used a mixture of mud, clay, all sorts of different natural materials to make a little cap. What it's done is it's gone inside those um, holes, it's laid eggs, and then it's sealed them over. And that's just to keep them nice and safe until they hatch. So these eggs were laid and the um, tubes sealed up last summer. And I had a great time watching them do it and they're kind of really busily working away. And they've lasted all winter. And once the weather gets a bit warmer and it's time for them to emerge, the bees will emerge out of those little um, containers. So your bee home isn't going to look exactly like this because you're just going to have to use the materials you can find lying about. We don't have access to the uh, commercial bee homes at the moment because we're all living under lockdown conditions. So what we're going to do is I'm going to use the things that I can find lying about in my garden. I'm going to have a little search about, see what kind of materials I can find. I'm going to have a look in the recycling. I'm going to have a look around the garden and see what's lying spare. And I'll see if we can bring together a bunch of materials that we can use to make a nest. And you can do the same in your garden. Just see what you've got. Okay, so I've managed to locate a drill, some secateurs, some scissors, an old hacksaw, um, some string, a few old off cuts of wood. They might come in handy. These were actually left over from building a bird box, but they're a bit odd sizes, but I'm sure we can make something of them. We're going to need a container for our uh, soil to be home, so these might be something we can use for that. There's some plant pots that I've been lying about. I've got an old bottle, an old plastic bottle. These are plastics, so they wouldn't be suitable for putting up in a uh, nature reserve or anything like that, but these are fine for in our garden. And they'll probably come in handy, they'll be nice and water, water tight, so they'll probably come in really handy as a container. I've got some sticks that I found lying about. Now, I actually found these in the garden, but you could maybe use your daily exercise walk to go out looking for sticks. These will be really useful to use to help pack the container, because we want to make sure the materials in there are nice and tight and nothing falls out. So sticks, natural materials, things like that, will be really useful as packing. Possibly most useful of all, I've got a garden cane. This is really the key to this solitary bee hole. Um, this is the most important part. But don't worry if you don't have one, because there's something else we can do with just a block of wood. But a garden cane is ideal. These bamboo canes are really useful because they're already hollow inside. So if we cut them up, we'll have ready-made hollow tubes. And that's the first thing we're going to do. We're going to cut our bamboo cane down into short sections. Now we need these sections to be smaller in length than the container that they're going to go inside because this is Scotland and it's going to rain and we don't want them to get wet. So we need to cut them down into sizes that we know will fit inside our container. And then once we've cut them down, just make sure that they're actually hollow in the middle. You can use a drill or a screwdriver here. You'll probably just have to clear out a little bit of um, soft material that's in there. Now the bees won't like it if there's things already in there. So you want a nice clean hole. So just make sure you have a little uh, clean about and make sure it's nice and smooth for them. So I have to say that I'm going to make my first bee home out of a plastic bottle. So I'm going to use the lengths of cane that I've cut to measure and I'm going to mark on the bottle exactly where I want to cut it, so that it's just bigger than the canes. And then I'm simply going to use a pair of scissors to cut the bottle in half. 
Now I've done this off screen just in case I commit any health and safety violations while I'm doing it. But it's actually pretty simple. Just be careful. Make sure you don't cut yourself or hurt yourself on the sharp edges of the ball. You can see I've actually got some cell tape here and gone around the edges of it just to make sure that it's nice and safe. Once you've done that, you've got your bottle uh, ready to receive the, the canes. What you're going to have to do now is put a little hole in the bottom. This is to feed your strength through. So I've done it with a drill, but you can do it with a pair of scissors, whatever you've got handy. And just feed your piece of strength through, and this is what you're going to use to hang the bottle up later. Try not to make quite as much of a meal of it as I have here. If only I was working with professional labour, it would be much simpler. But yeah, eventually you'll get your strength fed through, and that's going to be perfect for hanging the bee hole up. Now that your strings through your bottle, it's ready for you to put the canes in. So get your canes, or your little cut lengths of cane. Make sure that the open end of them is facing outwards, so facing towards the, the open end of the bottle. And uh, just put them inside. So you're basically looking to fill as much space as you can. I don't have all that many, all that many canes here because I only had one uh, bamboo cane to chop up. But as, you can fill this with as many as you want. And if you can fill the whole space with canes, that's brilliant. That would be really good. But otherwise, just take the canes you've got and stick them in the bowl. You can probably see that I don't have quite enough canes to fill the bottle up. Now, we don't want to just leave these uh, canes lying loose in there because they'll just rattle around and they'll fall out and there won't be any use to anybody. So what we're going to do now is get those sticks that you found earlier and we're going to pack them into the spaces around the canes. Now, the bees won't limp in amongst the sticks, but other things might. Lots of insects will probably find that quite a nice nesting space themselves. So, as well as a subtle to the bee hole, you're actually also making a little bit of a bug hotel. So that can be really useful to kind of two for one deal we're doing here. So get your sticks, fill up any gaps, make sure it's all nice and tight inside and that if you kind of tilt the bottle, nothing falls out. It needs to be really kind of packed in there. The next step is to take your bottle and find somewhere to hang it up. Some of the bees will like to find it. So ideally, we would like you to put it in a south facing position so that it gets lots of sun, lots of warmth, because that's what the bees want. Um, any sunny spot will do it, but south facing is ideal. You want to make sure as well that it's at least a metre off the ground because again that will help the bees to find it and that's the sort of conditions they want to live in. You could hang it in a tree, you could attach it to the side of a fence, you could um, hang it off a shed, you could hang it off the side of your house. There's lots of different options here but just try and make sure that it's in that nice sunny spot. Once you've found a space for your bee home and you've got it hanging up, it'd be a good idea now just to remove that tape that's around the edges just so that nothing gets caught in it. Hopefully, after a few days, a few weeks, you'll start to see bees using it. You'll start to see them hanging about the entrance, going inside, laying their eggs, then filling up the little compartments, coming back out. You'll see a bee will use the same compartment several times, and what it's doing there is laying an egg, sealing it off, then laying an egg in the next compartment, sealing that off, and so on and so on and so on, until it's filled up the whole cane, which is really quite a clever way of doing it. We use the bottle to make a container, but of course there's lots of other things you can use, like we kind of hinted at earlier. So here's some that we made earlier in true Blue Peter fashion. We've got a plant pot, and then we've just done exactly the same thing. We've uh, stuffed it full of our canes and our sticks and made it all nice and secure. There's already a hole in the bottom, so that'll be perfect for hanging up, or just finding a nice, a nice space to prop it up. You also get to see a bit of my DIY skills here. We used those off cuts of wood that we found earlier and we just kind of made a little box out of them, sort of an open-ended box if you like. Really simple, really quick, really badly made, but the bees won't mind that as long as it's watertight and the, you know, the canes aren't sticking out of the end, it'll be perfect. Like I said earlier, if you don't have a garden cane, there are still things you can do. What you could try is just drilling some holes into a block of wood. So I've got an old uh, piece of, of wood here. And all I'm going to do is use a drill to put some long, uh, deep holes into it of various different sizes, so anywhere between like five millimeters, centimeter and a half, something like that. Make a lot of, try and make quite a few different sized holes, and then let the bees choose themselves um, which ones they want to use, because some of them are like different sizes from others. You could do a fancy pattern or a smiley face, or you could just do what I did and randomly draw some holes. Same sort of rules. Leave this in a nice sunny spot about a metre off the ground and hopefully some bees will find it and they'll be delighted to call that home. Thank you for watching our video from Cumberland and Landscape on how to build a solitary bee home. Look out for more content and videos from us in the upcoming weeks. 
You can also check out our social media. We're on Twitter as at Wild Cumbernauld. Facebook is Cumbernauld Living Landscape. And we've also got our website, cumbernauldlivinglandscape.org.uk, where we've got some fantastic activities and things that you can download and try at home. Thanks for listening.